Well, hello and welcome to PM Personality Profile. My name is Nanan Sakwal IV. This is one interview I've been chasing for a while and today I am happy to say we got it. And I'm sure you're gonna be even more excited than I am. I'm sat right here waiting for the very Mrs. Fulerali Man. She has a story to tell. Of course we know some of it, but there must be some things that happen in the home that she hasn't said yet. And that's what I'm trying to see if I can get it out. And indeed, just trying to find out how a lady who was once upon a time a first lady, you know, would leave all her airs and graces and roll up her sleeves and graft to the bone just to make her family survive. That's a story to be told. And that's why I'm here. You don't want to move. This is one of those interviews that I call life-changing. Don't move. When I come back, I'm talking to Mrs. Fuller Alima. I'm sure you want to hear this. Well, thank you very much for staying. And just like you, this is my favorite part when you're waiting for the conversations to start. But this is how I'm going to start this conversation. And it starts from Michelle Obama. You know, apparently, he walks into a, a burger bar with... Uh, Obama, and there's a guy selling uh, burgers, and you know, he tells his husband, oh, I used to date this guy. So then Obama says, oh, so you would have been a proud owner of a uh, you know, beggar joint's wife. And he said, no, if I had married this man, he would have been the president. You see, all too soon, the women we marry make who we are. However, because men make the rules, they are kept quietly in the back. But believe you me, a great percentage of men today are who they are because of the choices they made in marriage. And I'm here to talk to one such woman who indeed made a president, even though he did not, she did not marry a president, but eventually she made a president. Well, for tradition and courtesy and everything, she's going to be Ma in the interview. But to you at home, she's Mrs. Fulera Liman. But for me here, she's Ma. And I've actually groveled and used all the things to get this interview. So enjoy it. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And I am absolutely, you know, pleased that you granted me this interview. So I'm going to take you all the way back to, I mean, 1945, November 8th. Where were you born? Well, I was born in the northern part of Ghana. Okay. And uh, precisely, I was born in Yendi. Okay. And, uh, but my father was a policeman. Okay. Yes, that's why it happened so. And by my mother, who also hails from that area. So I was actually born in Yendi, okay. but I was brought up in Gambaga. I see. Yes. So, uh, so were your parents educated then? No. But they put you through school? Yes. Because, you know, you, you have stories where, you know, people did not get the opportunity to go to school because the parents were not educated. You know, what, what is it that made your parents send you through school? What experiences? <laughs> Well, as, as I've told you, my, my father was a policeman. Mm -hmm. So all of us, we went to school. My father's children, we all went to school. Yes. That's nice. Right. Up, up north? Yes, up north. At, at which point did you descend south? Because uh, I know at some point you came down south. Uh, when I was then, I was in Kwadaso training school, agricultural training school. Okay. That's just where, there's a time uh, in, in Kumasi. Oh. Well, that's so, that's the time I really descended. So you're, you're training to become a teacher? No, an agriculturist. Agriculturist? Yes. Agriculturist. Did, did you pursue it? Oh, yes. I was working. In, in the agri ministry? Or? Yes, in Tamale. Okay, you, you went back? Up yes, north. after that I was back posted in Tamale. You stayed there long? Oh, yes. Not too long. Before I met my, my husband, or oh, should I say, <laughs> my husband met me or we met each other, yes. But that, that was in Legon? Oh, that was one, still... when I was there in Tamale that I went to Legon, I, I went to the uh, school, the uh, 
New Year school. Okay. Mm -hmm. I used to attend it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then you met there, or how did it happen? I've said this several times. <laughs> you know, I don't <laughs> need to say it again. Some of, some of my viewers don't know it. Oh, they know. Even I don't know it. Sure. No. <laughs> Even <laughs> just recently, I said it on 23rd. Of I see. Other place, yes, how we met. <coughs> it, well, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's not any, any big deal. Uh, as I was saying, I had a brother. My late brother, his now late brother, who was then studying in Russia. Mm -hmm. And uh, she needed a scholarship. So through friends, I was uh, asked to contact uh, then uh, Dr. Lehman, mm -hmm. who normally helps a lot of people. On that. And at that time, he was in the, in the for she was in the foreign affairs. So that is how the con it was through writing. So I, f I wrote him to find out whether he'd be able to assist. This is the problem of my brother, if he'd be able to assist. And he said, she, until when I got married to him, that I got to know that, yes, she devotes most of his time for people who, especially in education, encouraging, and helping in any way. So when I wrote that letter, so he replied and said she would try, even though it didn't work out. You see. So uh, when I attended a New Year school, I told him that I was coming there, and that's where he came and met me. Oh. So that was our first time of meeting each other. Let me go back. How many, how many siblings have you got? Oh. <laughs> we are, as a, a policeman say, child, we are many. Oh, so <laughs> <laughs> because it was only one wife my, my, my father had. Okay. So we are, we are many, yes. Hmm. And uh, Gold Coast policeman, was he, was he very strict? Hey, my father. I can't even tell. That. Very, <laughs> very strict, honest, straightforward. Hmm. That's how he was. Uh, d d uh, did, did he have to do like posting so that you travel oh, around? Oh, yes, that is why we, in fact, we used to travel along with him. Because mm -hmm. I remember I was with him at Kitty Krachi, were there. But you know, it does, in those days, police station, nobody will even tell you. So neat, mm. well kept. Because of that, when you have children, uh, many children, it's a lot of problem. No children like to play, to mm -hmm. litter around. Yeah. So the seniors are always complaining. So it came to a time that my father got to know that, hey, this one is too much for me. So he decided to leave we, the children, back at home to go to school. So he would take his wife or the one, just yes, one or two, and then be in the station in which he is. So all of us were at home attending school with our mothers at home. Yeah. Well, the, uh, what, what do you think we lost between when you guys were in school? I'm sure, you know, you were not in air-conditioned classrooms and all these amenities, but, you know, that generation seemed to turn up very upright. Discipline. Discipline. Yes. And those this strict discipline. Yes, so I, I believe it was discipline. But uh, had, uh, was Daddy a Christian then? No, my father was a Muslim. But, but you're a Christian? Or? Yes, I'm a Christian. Did, did you convert or...? No, since my childhood. He, he wasn't bothered that you... No, no, him? my father wasn't that strict on that. I see. He will only tell you. But, so. Well, that's interesting because I know sometimes uh, if a father is a Muslim, guards the uh, oh. religion very strongly. Yeah. Perhaps because he wasn't around. That <laughs> should let me say so. I see, yeah, so. I see, I see, I see, I see. Uh, Let's, uh, we, we, so, you, you had your first child down south in Accra? Or? No. <laughs> there he is there. <laughs> in Lomi. In Lomi? Yes. Okay. Oh, foreign service. service foreign yes, service. Yes, yes. Foreign service. Uh, and how has he been? Enjoyed the children? Oh, I had good kids. I, and I said, all this boils to discipline. 
Mm. Yes, and they knew their father, you know, so there was not that problem at all mm. with my kids. Yes, there was. I always say it depends on the training. So when you, uh, uh, I remember some of my friends who always say that I can travel to leave my children and I wouldn't be worried because I train them in the morning when they reach of age come back from school before you sleep, arrange your things, your bag, your shoes, everything. When you wake up, it's not a time that you'll be running, where is my shoe or where is my this? They get up and when they are of age, they will make their breakfast to go to take and go to school. They have their portions to sweep the house. You know, so I really, there's that sort of thing. So when they wake up in the morning, you don't need to scream at them or to say what I do. They always know what to do. You, you don't believe in house help? You don't take I do, house I do, I do. But you still think I the had, children I should help? Oh, yes, because they have to be trained. How do you have, <laughs> yes, a house is there uh, to help, but not to do the work for them. At least they must learn themselves how to take care of themselves. D did they think you were too disciplined? You, 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 you sound more like the more disciplined type than that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you sound more like the more disciplined type. Bo borrowed from that, the policeman. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. I was just doing the right thing. Yes, the right thing. Because um, the Bible says, train a child. Mm. There is, she will not depart from it. So, I always say it's just from uh, training, the discipline. Mm. You know, I wouldn't, uh, there are some stubborn children, but all depends on how you go about it. And so with me, by God's grace, I, mean, I never had any troublesome child with me. They all were okay. Well, they are okay. With the number of doctors and the number of upright children you have, I'm sure uh, it tells for itself that it, pay, it paid off. So I think those of you listening, if you have a house help, they are supposed to help, not uh, do everything. Oh, <laughs> no, they have to help, not to do everything. They are supposed to help us. That's great. And how many grandchildren so far? About 13. 13. You're blessed. Thank you. You're blessed. <laughs> you are very, very, very blessed. Now, I know you like to talk about this a bit, and so I'll jump and I'll come back. But, you know, when uh, your husband, you know, Mr. Liman, comes to you to say, you know what, I'm going into politics and I'm going to run for power, uh, did you advise him? No. I never liked it. Because at that time, we just returned from Switzerland, mm -hmm. Geneva. And uh, I was in my business. I started because of uh, foreign affairs. I have to resign from my work. So I have to start doing something, you know. So, and uh, by God's grace, the business was picking up and I was doing well. So I just could not understand knowing <laughs> what is happening in this country with mm. coups and uh, politics. When she told me, I wasn't happy at all. And uh, as I have said uh, on 23rd, um, I, I asked him, why does he want to live? Where, where he is, it's okay. And I'm also doing well. Why does he want to leave all this and go into politics, which is unpredictable? And then, as, is, as I said, she looked at me and laughed smiled and said, yes, but one has to sacrifice for the country. And indeed, I must confess, he has always been complaining about the country, mm. you know, the way things are going. Mm -hmm. And I remember one time I asked him, I said, well, I think that's during a champion times uh, time. So I was saying, uh, can things really be okay? And then he said, if you get the right people there, things will be all right. So when he decided to do politics, honestly, I wasn't happy at all. And even at that time, they wanted even him to go and post them. So he was to leave the country again to another station. But because he wanted to resign, 
to go to do into policies, you know, it was resisting, you see. Let me take a break here. I know the conversation is getting interesting. We are coming straight back. After the resistance, what happened? Well, thank you very much for staying and we are speaking to uh, Mrs. Fuller Man, former First Lady of Ghana. And it's very interesting, just before the break, uh, you had gotten to a point where uh, your husband was going to be transferred, but he had to resist the transfer because he had to come back and start politics. Yes. You were based in Switzerland then? or We came back oh, you from came back. Houston, yes. Okay. That's why I said we came back. I started some business. Mm -hmm. It was going fine. And then uh, he later on want to, wanted to be reposted to another station. Mm -hmm. And then that's where he made up his mind to do the politics. Mm -hmm. But when we were in Lomi, I didn't mention that. I remember when Lomi was this time. Mm -hmm. uh, his constituency called, asked him to come when the <coughs> they were going to do the elections, mm -hmm. to come and stand for their constituency. So at that time, he hasn't made up his mind to do politics, he said. So she told them that if he wants to come, if they want him to come, because he has not decided to do it, mm -hmm. but if they want him, then it should be unopposed. Otherwise, what is the point? First of all, I'm not yet prepared. Mm -hmm. Then leave my job and come and maybe not win the, the seat. But I know he would have won the seat because he's loved by the people mm -hmm. there. But he told them that. And the, they said, oh, now this is not easy, democracy, this and that. I said, OK, then I'm also not yet prepared. Wow. Yes, so that is how. She did not contest those that okay. time. But then, as I've told you before, uh, so when he mentioned that and I told him, as he told me that some must sacrifice for the nation, I was still not happy, mm -hmm. resisting. So, you know, we, we, we <laughs> mentioned, she just ignored it. She didn't, she didn't mind me again, she just kept quiet. One day she came home with a letter so he gave it to me in a envelope. I said, oh, what is this? So I look inside, you read it. And when I opened, it was this registration letter. So I said, ah, what do you want me to do? You've already decided you've done me, and you are giving it to me to do what? He said, to let you know. <laughs> so, so that was it. Mm. Uh -huh. But uh, in actual, he, so I told him, what is the next thing? He said, oh, she's going to contest that his constituency. Uh, at uh, Upper West now, uh, Tumu. Mm -hmm. so, so that is how we started. We, she started. What, what, what business had you started? What was it? I was doing my tie and dye business. First ah. I went into poetry, then I left it, and then I went into tie and dye. Okay, okay. Yes. So ah. I've been in it for long. I see. Yes. That's how come my wife says mm -hmm. she still has a time I've that you get. for long. <laughs> yes, that's how so many people know me through that. I see. Yes, because uh, I started to do something different and the people like it. So, as uh, oh, um, great. Are, are you still training people in Thai and I? You? No, I'm, I'm old now. I, but I do it as a hobby. Oh, OK. Yes. Uh, OK. Yeah. So by this time, which means uh, your husband has to be traveling back to Tumu quite often because yes, he started the campaign. Fact, he was, yes, it, he was part of the, the, when the party was, in a way, it's a long story, but you can imagine uh, a lot of people here and there which party to go and this and that and that eventually with the PNP Murugala. So, so even their, uh, their manifesto and all that, he was one of those people who wrote them. And he was just behind the scene working for the, the, the party mm. then, you know. He was just behind the scene, but he knows he was going to contest, but he was helping not forefront. Whatever they are doing, he is always behind the scene, so working for them. So the day that uh, she was on his way to go 
and uh, register over there. And he was called back. That was when Murugala was disqualified. And they were looking for someone to take over his place. Wow. Yes. As, um, fate, as fate will have it. Have it, you see. So I remember the one evening we were at home. Our house was just open, a lot of meetings here and there. You know, he was concerned about a lot of things. Mm. Things about the North. Most of the time, I used to tease the, the, his colleagues. See, you're holding your, <laughs> your uh, portfolio, what do you call the, those handbags? Uh, briefcase. Briefcases with papers. <laughs> <laughs> While others are holding them with money, <laughs> <laughs> they will laugh and laugh. They will come. Most of the time, yes, they are always, uh, he's always engaged, and a lot of the people had respect for him. So. Mm. I and maybe a lot of people normally come for him for advice and all that. So uh, when uh, he was, uh, I, uh, we were there to so one evening when Imuregala himself came to inform him this is what has happened, and uh, the the people, the, the executive people were saying that they want him to take the mantle. And initially he resisted. He said, "Oh, I'm young." There are others older than me. Why don't you consult them first before coming to me? Mm -hmm. you know, that's what she said. And uh, she insisted, and few were consulted before they, they turned, them, turned it down. And then she said, well, if I have been fighting for something like this, and another, but this one has fallen, the matter has fallen on me, why then should I refuse? Mm -hmm. So that is where he accepted. Wow. To take care uh, I mean, from when he accepted, did you conceive that, oh, this, it could be that you, you win and become the president? No, 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 no. That, I was so worried. And for his constituency, I knew she was going to win hands. In fact, at that time, people didn't want to oppose him. Funny you know, it was one of his best friends who rather opposed him <laughs> in MPP, yes. So, if not because of him, he would have been unopposed wow. for that. Mm -hmm. So, but that one, I wasn't where I knew she was going to win hands down. You know, that one, I wasn't bothered mm -hmm. at all. But the day they announced this, thing, that one, it was, yes, I knew that we are in for the, a for the, for the big, We are in for the big one. Oh, I mean, that's president. One. So that one, yeah, yeah, yeah it wasn't, it wasn't uh, easy. Yes. See, he's such a principal and generous man. Is he, is he difficult to marry? Even though he's a good person. But he's opened his door, so everybody has to come and eat. Everybody has to come and get mm -hmm. advice. Mm -hmm. And was it difficult to marry? <laughs> <laughs> no, I always say I'm blessed to be married to him. Wow. He's so patient, understanding. That's how we brought up the children. That we, mm -hmm. we both of us, we discipline the children. Even when I'm wrong, he will not say anything. Later, he would tell me, you know, this is the way you should go about it. So if you ask my children, they have never seen us arguing. Wow. You won't believe it. Wow. Me, <laughs> yes, a talkative like me, we have <laughs> never, if you ask the children, they've never, never seen me and their father arguing. But we do. We do when they are asleep. We do when they are not around, you know. I think I'm learning lessons. So we learn <laughs> we are, yes, that one. I've always been telling mm. those who have the said no. But are, are you the, uh, it's like me and my wife. I, I am the one that wants to do a party and get people in. And she's the one that wants us to be home and be quiet. Let's not get people in. So there's always a conflict. You, you like the party? Yeah, I like people to come and eat. As soon as she cooks, I invite somebody. <laughs> oh, this. <laughs> What, what are you doing? Oh, she, well, there's well. some food, come. You know, and I can see your husband, it's like a magnet. People are drawn towards him. So whether you like it or not, you have to accommodate everybody. No, yes, they come, when they come, but we were not the party fans. Well, 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 anyway, when I say party, not party party, but I, I, you know, I, I love people to come and eat and come and sit and talk. Uh, you you so, invite them to come. Uh, yeah, so uh, my uh, wife has no choice but to deal with it. Then you, <laughs> that's too much for her. No. <laughs> Me, it's the meetings, a mm. lot of meetings and all that. So when they come, 
you have to provide for them mm. tea, this and that. Apart from this, that's how it was. Mm. But she, she's not that type of person. Mm. Yes, even if she doesn't go out much, when we go out, it's to the same friends we go and come. So as for the eating in the house and part when meetings you have, eh, most of the time there are people in the mm. house coming. Yes. So definitely, you can cook and leave them out. You have to save them and all that. Everybody. Yes. Uh -huh. Did you do some of the campaign trips with him, or no? I I, I did it in Greater Accra. Okay. Especially mostly when she is not around. Mm. Uh -huh. I went to other constituencies also to campaign. With okay. People. Oh yes. Okay. Well, yes, I went around. You see, I said there is the woman that makes the president. Of <laughs> <laughs> Uh, secretly, the woman that makes the <laughs> makes the president. I remember the first day I went on stage, it wasn't easy. <laughs> <laughs> I said, "Huh, it wasn't easy." I thought the West were not even coming. <laughs> but then, from then on, I took off, and uh, where, where I was yes, campaigning around. Yes, we did, and because most of the time he wasn't also at home. Mm. Many people in the had we used to you know party. You yeah. know they were coming. Posters, t shirts, this and that. So, that little money that I saved and all that, we have to use it for all this. Oh, dear. Oh, yeah, mm. my dear, it, it, it wasn't easy. I have to use it. Luckily, this, this brother of mine that I, that, too, yes, he was back in the country and uh, actually he helped a lot. Oh, yes. Even the um, posters that they used on the police stations. We printed them all. She was so busy wow. outside campaigning, yes. Wow. Um, the day they announced the ballot and the accounting and they declare and they, I mean, you hear your husband's name, that look, your husband is one. I mean, did you believe it or did you have to let it sink in first? Or? Uh, well, I got for that. <laughs> <laughs> How, how did you hear it? From the radio or somebody told you personally or you heard it before the nation? Can I even remember? You know, people were sitting down listening and all that. Yes. So, you know, the gap wasn't that great. It wasn't that much, especially on the parliamentary. Lesson. So one was a bit worried what will happen, this and that. But at the end of the day, when we, <laughs> the party was true. Yes, we were all happy. Our house was full of people jubilating, screaming, and all that. At that time, we were at Tata Salanda. Okay. Yes. Uh, what, 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 what's of the best things of being a first lady? The best? Yeah, I mean, some of your best moments of being a first lady. Hmm. I wonder whether I really had the best time as a first lady. Okay, what, what are some of the good things about being a first lady? There must be something good about it. You talk Apart about the good thing. <laughs> Apart from the stress, there must be something good about mm -hmm. it. Well, I don't, I, the good thing is just, yes, you are on the high, the same people respect you here and there, yes, that's all. But apart from that, I don't see what. Now let's, now let's it's talk. just a during our time. And you know, the time she took over wasn't an easy thing mm -hmm. at all, yes. And um, Hila was so strict that even when we were in the castle, he wants us to live as a normal life. <laughs> I am telling you, you won't believe it. I remember <laughs> one day I went, I said, ah, my car, there is no petrol in my car. Go and queue for it. I said, what? I should go and queue for it. <laughs> for it. When you talk, he will say, oh, we have a lot to do for the country. These pet petty things don't worry me with them. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that, that's how he is. Hmm. He was like that, yes. But you, 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 I think you got used to it. Of course, yes. What can I do? <laughs> I have to. I have to. I have steady to God to know that that is him. And I have to, yes, because if you I let it, well, I'll be worrying all myself. Mm. But I know he's not doing it to hurt me. Mm. But that is how he is. So, uh, also. And <clears throat> as First Lady, did you have to 
you know, travel up and down with him or? I do travel some occasions. I've mm -hmm. traveled with, with him, yes. But some, no. I see, I know you didn't want the kids to, you know, have a sport life. But here we are with, you know, the consolidated funds and the power of the, of the nation now in your hands. At this time, are you going to you know, spoil them a little bit? Well, they were even in boarding school. That's so to them, but they said it even less. They are just a normal life. They could not even, in fact, the, their, their problem was, because most of the time, too, I also used to go out. They invite me for speeches here and there. So they were not seeing us much, mm. and then especially their daddy. So they are always, uh, the one just passed, passed <laughs> it, this uh, Lillian's mom one day. We don't see you, we, we always, we come from school, we go to school, we don't see you, we come home, you are not, you know, there, there's no children. Yes, that's, they weren't happy at all. But what can we do? We try to explain to them, this is the situation. So, but they were too young at that time. Mm. And that's the time they needed to be close with us in any way. I do understand. But we always go out. Either I'm here, he is over there. And I, so most of the time, actually, the children were not seeing us as they should. Yes. Was there a time that you tell him that, listen, you can't carry the whole Ghana's problems on your shoulders? Look, relax and let us also live a little bit. Oh, yes. Because he is, he, he, in fact, through us his life, even in the foreign affairs, my husband sleeps always after two. He will bring work from the office to the house to continue working. I remember when we were in Lomi, when we left Lomi, three people have to take his work, the work that he alone was doing. The whole way in Geneva to the same thing. Wow. He works. So in the castle, he works like that. He can sit. So that is it. I, I remember one day it was so much for him that the doctors have to send him to Pedroasi to go and uh, have a small rest. He wasn't feeling well. Then, then. So as for him with work, yes, you can't go in between that. Wow, wow, mm. wow, wow. The, when the coup happened, I mean, uh, wh where were you at the time when the coup happened? I was in the castle. Did you, what was your reaction? I told you so? No, no, no. I didn't at all. That's not the time of <laughs> <laughs> looking for, no, 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 at all. What, what, what was the reaction? What was the mood? What, what, what was the decision to take? He, 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 well, he on, 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 when it happened, we separated. So he left. So I was in the castle. But honestly, when even the soldiers came, they were nice to me. Collected some of my things. I remember, I'm sure some of my things even got lost in the castle there. But they were nice because According to them, they were not after my man, but after the people who are, who surround him, you see. But that doesn't make sense, you see. That he has no point, he is a, a good man, and therefore, it's not the one they are looking for and all that. So honestly, uh, they didn't worry us, pack our things and with my children, and we went to, uh, their uncle's place at Tassan. How, how drastic was life? You know, today you're the first lady and then the next day you were not the first lady. How drastic was the life change? Honestly, to me, it was just that because we were, let me see, this, I, I don't know the word to use on that. You know, but I, Because I didn't say much, the difference between my old life. Because I have always said that when we were going to the castle, we were better off than when we left the castle. Mm. Honestly, I'm telling you. 
Because when we were going, my, my husband has a Benz. I was using my Beetle, Vax Wagon, mm -hmm. doing my business. So we were better off when we went to the castle. We left the castle without anything. Nothing, I'm telling you. Nothing, absolutely nothing. I came back and went back onto the old Benz car. But the perception is that, you know, by after tasting power, when you come back, you should have a bigger Benz car and a bigger uh -huh. So that, But that is a difference of my husband. He doesn't believe in those things. Wow. Yes. He said, as he said, when Ghana is okay, we all enjoy. So why he should I? He kept saying that, didn't yes. he? Yes. Yeah, he's been saying it. Even when I, at the time, because when I came, he was so engrossed with his work that if I wonder whether he remembers <laughs> that he has a family. I said, hey, so these are our children. We have nothing saved even for them. He said, well, I shouldn't worry. If Ghana is okay. The They'll children of Ghana and his children will be okay. Very principled. So we left us. We were far. Just what my, that's what I was afraid of when we were going. We left castle with nothing. Nothing. So you basically had to start again from the scratch. Nothing. But as, as a first lady, you were entitled, I mean, your first family, you should be entitled to the state paying you on a monthly oh, those, basis. Oh, those, those days, no, no. When they are rather looking to find faults against us and all that. So who would think about those things? You know? did, you, did you go back to Thai and I? Yes. That's what I, we survived. That's what I used to educate my children. But I thank God she was around and then he helped them with the studies. Yes. That's Basically, you know, Ty and I took you to the castle and when you came back, back that's I what... I went back, yes, to Ty and I. Ooh. You're not as soft as you look, you know. You're a very strong woman. <laughs> <laughs> you just you just talk soft, but but you're not. Oh, but you're not. No, no, you know. <laughs> One of those, one of the things I always say, and I'm saying, is I said, my prayer used to be that, you know, when you are strong and young, you can work. And I remember one of our tutors used to say that, work, that gives you money, if it is debt, it's not filthy. When you work, you make, after that you take your bath and you are fine. You know, so work that may gives you your living. Yes, I was, that's what I was doing. And all my children were helping me when they are on holidays. When I go to trade fair, they are there to assist and all that. Even when they are, when even they are in university, they come holidays, they come to help. But were, you, were you not feeling that, you know, well, look, I'm the first lady now, I don't want to get, you know, tie and dye ink on my hands and... Aha, uh -huh. that's, the, that's the thing. When I came here to this house, when we came, this, you know, my husband bought this house mm -hmm. with long before when we were in Geneva. So relatives were staying, not that we rented. It was just he gave it to relatives. Mm -hmm. So after the coup, Nisha, we have to come back. After when she was released, we have to come back here. Come and see this house. No wall, dirty, filthy, standing by it. I came. We moved in here. All the trees you see, I planted them. I used, I hope, I used the whole to do. I did everything. No, even there was no water. When we were here, six months, no water. To use the car to go and look for water. You know, people were talking, oh, former first lady, look at what she's doing. But what do you want me to do? I don't feel shy to work to take care of my children, my family. Wow. I'm not doing anything that is bad. That way, yes, but I am working to take care of my. So I wasn't worried at all. So when we came here, all I, did, I planted the hedges and everything. And later on, the flowers and all that people were saying. Now, those who were criticizing now are praising me. Say, so I worked. Because if there's no one to take care of you, you see that I say, I'm a former head of, a former first lady. For my first lady, <laughs> nothing is coming from nowhere from that. What do I do? 
go from house to house to beg when I can work. No, I decided to do it work. So I really, when we came here, yes, it wasn't easy. Did your children appreciate it though? That listen, this is my mom who's risen to the top of the nation. And now for one reason or the other, he's back crafting to make sure that we are okay. Oh yes, they know. From grace to grass. That's what they were helping. That's what they were all helping. Wow. Yes. I mean, I know you said, I mean, did you have family or close friends who would be thinking, look, don't do this, you, 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 you're stooping too low? No, no, no. No, no, no. But if, no, I, what, what do you mean by stooping too low? Well, here you are with the whole, you know, cleaning your own house with your whole, ah. planting your own. So tree. what do you want me to do? At that time, no work to be done. I have to settle myself. Nobody was thinking, as I said, maybe some few beloved friends, friends mm -hmm. who helped everyone, one yes. Apart from that, even many people didn't want to associate themselves with us because they know people were so vindictive that uh, when they see you, they see you with a, a leman, it's a problem, what do you, this, that. So they tried not to come near us. And so what do I do? Get up and sit down, no food, nothing. My children are there. Oh no, I have to work because I have been trained like that from my childhood days and that is why I thank God for that, you see. Now, uh, well, ex-president Liman then was detained a little bit after the coup. Mm. So when, when he came back, so when he came back, you had already moved? Uh, I was in Nigeria. Okay. Yes, I left, I went to Nigeria. So when he was released, you were in Nigeria then? When, when he was released, well, yes, 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 okay. yes. Did he join yes. you there, or then no? He, I came. You when came. he released, yes, I came. Not quite till I came, but yes. Mm. And how was he? Because he is also now a president mm. who is unemployed. Uh, I mean, was he able to help, and in which way? <laughs> help in which way? No, he was he was at home doing that thing. But that was he was taking care of the children. Yes. So that yes. means the families now, you have to, yes, you yes. Have to hold the family. The, yes. You see, I told you you're strong. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I have no choice. <laughs> I have no choice. And once I can do it, why not? Did you have any regrets then that he went into politics? Why didn't we just do our foreign service, retire peacefully oh, and that, travel that, the world that, over? That, that, that's bygones. Why should I? No. He didn't have any regrets? No. That he changed the course of the family with his political ambition? No, because that is what he wants. Wow. Only that he wasn't given the chance. I know if he had been given the chance, he would have proved to Ghanaians. And look at even when he took over. Look at the mess in which this country was when she took over. Within the, the uh, few, the sun. Uh, Mems of years, he was able to turn things around. I'm telling you, I remember when I went to London to attend Diana's wedding, and uh, who, after the wedding, as we were going, we uh, we introduced ourselves to the prime minister. That was Margaret Thatcher. Mm -hmm. So I just is the opportunity to thank her that my husband was there that I didn't travel with, with him to mm -hmm. the UK. So I told her, I said, oh, I was thanking her for the reception, good reception she gave to my husband when she was around there. Mm -hmm. Oh, so she said, Mrs. Sliman. And so we chatted small and we left. Then in the evening, we were to go for dinner. He was hosting us. When we were coming in, you know, as you come in, then immediately she saw me. Hey, Mrs. Sliman, 
I was shocked even the way she could remember and call <laughs> my name. Come and I'll introduce you to one of my uh, ministers. Is it Callahan or very tall mm -hmm. guy? I said, he went to introduce me and we chatted small. You know, I was taking, I was surprised the way, yes. So when I came back home, I was discussing it with my husband. I said, ah, yeah, it seems uh, Mrs. Uh, Margaret Thatcher knows <laughs> you so well. When I, she said, oh, so she smiled again. I said, yes. She said, she didn't even stay with her for long, 10 even they were. You know, normally mm -hmm. they confer when they, uh, he and, he and uh, she, after talking, she, when they came out, the ministers and all that were there, she told the ministers that they should do everything they can to help him because this is her first time of meeting an Africa head of state who knows his country's problem. Made an impression. Yes. So that was why he could not, that was in his head, yes. That, that was a, a first time. Who knows his country's problems? So they should do everything to uh, assist him. Wow. So she knows what he was about. Mm -hmm. Yes. He knows what he was doing. But only that she wasn't given the chance. And because she has worked in, in the foreign affairs, he knows how to handle things. He will never travel when she's looking for something without making sure that I'll get it before going. Do, do you think it took too long for us to get to know who your husband was? In terms of there was so much goodness, so much principle, so much uprightness in him, which hasn't been blown out. Everybody just knows. Oh, because yeah. they suppressed it. Yes, it was suppressed. They try as much as possible. Because I remember when I, a dimensor was um, mm. lunching there, uh, he said, uh, biography uh, on him. He was saying that she, she was looking for materials on him, he could not find. They destroyed everything. Wow. About him. It is not easy to get something from, something about him, Anna. They destroyed everything, you see. Well, I must say he may be smiling wherever he is on the <laughs> 20th anniversary. I think a lot came out which many people did not know. And that was on the 23rd. Those of you who missed it, uh, get a few snippets of it, uh, <clears throat> knowing him as a scholar, a diplomat, and, mm. uh, and, uh, and an ex-president, uh, was fantastic. And I think the family did very well. Uh, Thank you. The family did very well. I'm going to take a break, and then when I come back, <laughs> I'll find out. Lima, Lima now as a house husband. How was he? Don't go. Thank you very much for staying again. Hasn't it been wonderful? What a life story. What a story to share. And uh, I want to say thank you even before the interview ends. But before I forget, when we came to the, uh, you know, uh, anniversary, the 20th anniversary, the president promised to restore, you know, all your benefits as the first lady. I hope it started coming. Oh, yes. They will do it. They have to do it. Mm. They <laughs> They have as to do it for God do, and country. I'm sure he will honor his word. Yes, he mm, will for, do it. For God and country. You have to call the Flagstaff as well. Mm. Remi remind them. So you, you, uh, you're doing your hobby as your time. That, so do you sell or just for grandchildren and the kids? No, I sell. People oh. come. No, because I, I do it because people at times who come all the way from dance to play. They come. Okay. To act, so I don't want them to come and they don't get anything. So I still, yes, even though that's not what is feeding me, just mm -hmm. as I say, as mm -hmm. a hobby, yes. So we have I to, it. I, I, I have and to. And then come. also mm -hmm. to keep me active. I notice sitting at one place too like that is not good for our age. Even no, we have to move Yes, up. when I don't feel like working, I relax. Uh, but we have to get something at least to keep me a bit busy. That's good. Mm. That's good. Now, uh, Dr. Hila Liman as a house husband from a president. They did depress him. 
The man doesn't talk. So so even if he's distressed, you will not you know. You won't tell, you will know. He doesn't talk. But she was okay. Went back to his books? I'm telling you. The same reading. The children said it last. Reading. Reading. And she never changed it because still she goes to bed at two, sitting down here reading. Wow. And he was a good dad. He had yeah. time for the kids. Oh, yes. That is, that's why I said maybe it was also <laughs> a, a blessing in disguise. <laughs> 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 that's why I say a blessing in disguise because he had children, he had time. For the children, yes, studies and all that, yes. I mean, for uh, his era, it's not common for you know parents then like look, let's let's learn a poem, let's read a book, mm. you know. Uh, uh, oh, he that even they are friends. They are friends when they come here. Yes, he gets them, gets them work <laughs> to do. So I don't, the lazy ones will not come again. They are friends, but those who are interested. Yes, I remember a, a, a church member of my other daughter was saying, say, hey, my daddy has no time for us, but when I go to Dr. Lima's place, he will always teach us. We sit at his feet to let. <laughs> <laughs> I say, your dad, has, your dad is running around looking for, but he is sitting at home, that is why. He said, oh, no, no, she was telling the mother, I will come there, we steady, steady. I, uh, but at home, that has no time. I said, Dad is going to look for money. When you come <laughs> and... <laughs> so that's the difference. He was really, yes, he has time for the children. He likes reading, mm -hmm. yes, a lot. Th th there are stories about, you know, Dr. Liman, you know, his car would die out and you have to push, start the car. Were they just rumors or were they facts? Yes, it was a fact. Some, yes. If it's a rumor, well, it's not a rumor, yes. Was he bitter? No. Hey, that is one thing. Not at all. Not at all. Were you bitter? The no, treatment, no. I mean, for the goodness I you have gave to I've learned to know that. Why should I poison myself by becoming bitter? Yes. I don't, what that thing has happened. Why have, you, have, you met, have you met uh, Jerry John Rollins? No, 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 at all. Not in a, bumped in a party or no, a church no, no, or something? No, 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 no. Deliberate but only or just it's only the wife, but not him. Oh, okay. Even just recently at a, one of our wedding, my uh, husband's cousin's son was getting married in this way. Otherwise, you said hello? We met there. Did you say hello? Of course, yes, oh. I said hello. Yes, I don't want to have any, at my age, I don't want to have any bitterness against anyone. No. How do you do? God has trick? sustained me to this stage, mm -hmm. and why should I? No. I, th I thought it was a natural thing. I mean, and if I it was, uh, we met twice. Yes, I shook hands. We got greeted with her. The other time, to the same thing. I don't have any grudges against them. If if you had met Rollins, there would you? Oh, do I greet him. I will greet him. The only thing that posterity has shown the difference, as my children were saying, things that they have accused Liman for not doing, have they been done? That's what they are saying. Hospitals are graveyards. No, hospitals are not hotels. They are still the same or even worse off. So. And uh, after all this, you couldn't find anything against him. And he was able even to contest with you in the election. Then what else? Why should I have any grudges with anyone? Initially, it was hard. Hmm. But uh, I'm OK. If, if not for any personality, how about the state itself? How Ghana or the short period of history, you know, denied him of his, of his story to be told. Because sometimes it's the, it's the state machinery that has to play a role. Uh, did you get angry with the state machinery? That look, okay, fine. Let's say Jerry did it, he's gone. Now Kufo is come and gone, now Mills is come and gone. And all these government, nobody, you know, clicks, you say, no, hold on. 
we've wronged somebody somewhere. Let's go and rectify it. Well, that is up for that one day. I can't talk about it. There's a <laughs> <laughs> it's on your head. <laughs> <laughs> At least we are coming back on the right path. Oh, yes. Mm. Any advice you would give uh, the young women of today? Because you seem to have a lot to share that they have to mm. learn from. Not much. Just hard working. And I like the way you say that if, if, if the work is dirty but it pays you, then it's not filthy. As I said, it's not, it's not something that cannot be washed away. If <laughs> any work you are doing that you feel is dirty, you know, that after you finish your work, you bath and you are fine. It's not something that will stay in your body. You see? So that's what we have I've been taught. So I do my work, as you are saying. People are saying, first, a former first lady, this, that. I don't care about that. I rather care about my family. I do the right thing. Yes, I work. So that's, that's what I will entreat other women to do, you know, especially, and also bringing up their children. Because of late, you could see that even children are controlling their parents, which is very bad, yes. You discipline the children, you teach them with love. Yes, they will grow up and be what you want them to be. Yes. My children, when they were studying, you don't need to tell them, go and learn. They themselves, they know the time to learn. They know the time to watch TV and all that. Yes. And they have. Thank you so much. You are welcome. It's been, you know, uh, I don't know how to thank you enough. But I am very, very honored. And <clears throat> I'm sure those of you who started watching the interview, <laughs> by all means, have had <laughs> two or three <laughs> pointers that you're going to build your life with. If you're working and it's dirty, but you can wash it off and it earns you money, continue doing it. Continue doing it, work hard. And it doesn't matter how big you are, first lady, whatever it is, mm -hmm. your family comes first. So you can be in the limousine the next day. If you need a home yeah. to take care of your family, do it yes. and see. Now, I think she's even a bigger first lady than she was when she's actually in power. Look at us all crumbling for just a bit of her attention, giving her all the respect she's due. I think now you're a bigger first lady than you were before, you know. Enjoy it. Thank but <laughs> until you. next Friday, I always give you this number. It's 024-366-2001. Uh, 024-366-2001. Tanti's Fashion, they supply the shirts for the show. Give them a call and get yourself a shirt. But until next Friday, that I come to you with another personality. Have a brilliant, brilliant week. Mm -hmm.